Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> this is my guest Walter. And we have just <laughs> Yeah, we always want our hearts to crack open on this show. We never know how it's gonna work. But uh we have a special episode today because somehow by the internet grace of the internet gods we are able to stream a live show from here at the end of a mystery school. Today is literally the last day and um, <laughs> yeah and it's been so beautiful just all the healing that's been going on for everybody to face yeah face the demons. Yeah. <laughs> there were some that came up I'll tell you <laughs> that first night <laughs> yeah, I wanted we were... to hitchhike home. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we'll get rid of it. <laughs> I put out a request to everybody, or I said, you know, that we're all here, there's nine of us, nine teachers and resident staff, and that really the hard job was getting here, because, you know, some of them, it was up to a year of planning and, you know, putting their resources towards this and and their time and energy, and by the time they get here, our job was really just just to love them. And yeah, Walter was really one of the first ones who beautifully said, I'd like to call you on that because I really have a lot of fear. And so we just spent an hour the first night yeah. talking about that. And talking about and it. Giving me some meditations that night to really get me through that, na that night to, to get me the next day. And uh, I just found that I, was, I saw, I actually had a vision of, of the ego. Um, and, he, and he was really scared and he was trying to, he threw up so much fear into me that he wanted me to leave. And so I, I was, uh, I guess I was, but the first miracle was that I actually saw that. I saw uh, what that, kind of that picture of him or it that was trying to get me to leave. Mm -hmm. And um, and I said, no, no way am I going to leave. So I, I stayed and boy, uh, and we're talking about miracles and what, you know, what happened for me for miracles and just the miracle of this place is just incredible. I just, uh, every day I ask Holy Spirit to give me what I need to heal and I get it. I get a miracle or two or three. And sometimes they're not pleasant in the sense that for the ego, they're not pleasant. But for me, they're, um, they're, he they're so healing. And it allowed me to open up. I'm going to be emotional here too. Um, it's going to open up uh, my heart to everybody and just the love pour out. And uh, it was just so wonderful just the last. And, and it, com it comes up and down, up and down uh, throughout the, the whole stay here. But uh, the last few days have been up. So uh, <laughs> that's why you're on the show. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just, it's just, uh, I'm just amazed and so grateful for uh, this place and all of you and, and the uncompromising um, way that you run this place. I mean, every day is is a prayer, and it's uh, it's it's you know you pray and you listen and then you receive. And that's what we are doing every day. So I, I'm uh, emulating that, and and for me, it's working. Uh, it's really working. I'm getting miracles. Now I can share one miracle that um, happened to me uh, <laughs> specifically, and um, it was uh, one day I was feeling really just great, almost like like I was. I said to the group, I feel like you guys spiked ecstasy, ecstasy into the water. It was, I felt so great. And I was loving everybody and the love turned into a little physical attractions to certain people. And, and I actually, um, then uh, that night I was, I, I, I went into fear that Holy Spirit was going to tell me that I had to be with some other person. And that I had to, you're married. yeah, I'm married and, and that, that I'd have to leave my wife and that because, you know, I have to follow spirit, right? You know, spirit was going to tell me what to do. And uh, so I went into this really, this like fear and I just didn't, you know, like I don't know if that's, if I have to do that, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to listen to Holy Spirit. Anymore. <laughs> and so, um, and, but, and that took me a com just right out of joy. I mean, I was just boom. 
I was into fear and um, just terrible feelings. And uh, the next morning, it was so I got I woke up with a terrible headache. I usually don't have headaches. I had an upset stomach, uh, almost nauseous, and uh, you know because uh, here I am sick, and I'm oh my god I'm going to be sick now for the for a few days or whatever. I mean it came through my mind. And then during the day, I was, I, I, the day before I was loving everybody, I wanted to like extend my love. And that day I, I didn't want, I just like, get away. I don't want anybody. And, but it was a terrible, miserable day in that sense. But at, and then, and then later on in that day, I had a bloody nose too, which I rarely get. You know, it's like, and, uh, I, I joined with Michael a little bit that evening and he goes, well, that's just that thought, that one thought did that. The thought of uh, that Holy Spirit was going to make me do something, mm -hmm. and that I reacted to that. So that one thought I realized made me sick. Mm. And so when I gave that up, that thought to Holy Spirit, um, I wouldn't say that I immediately felt better, but the next day I, I was back into joy. Mm. So it was you know, it was like you know one thirty what one thirty six is uh, sickness is a defense That's against nice. the truth, and it really was. I mean, yeah. I really saw it so clearly, and that to me is a miracle that I could see that um, that the illness that I was having, the physical symptoms, were caused by that one thought, and that if I I could give that thought up, and I wouldn't, and I and I wouldn't the, have that Ill, illness. The thought that the spirit would ask you to yes. do that, or the thought that I'm not going to listen. Both. Both. Well, it was one after the other. Yeah, beautiful. And um, so it 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 was just. Um, to me, it was uh, it, it was to see that was so powerful that how powerful that our thoughts are, my thoughts mm. are, to be able to make to make me sick. Mm. Not that I want to, you know, heal everything in my physical body, but I don't want you know I want to be. And at the end of the day, I just said, if I if I have to um, if 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 I'm going to do it my way and it's going to make me sick, I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it. Holy Spirit's way. So, uh, I um, that's that's what that's what happened for, for me. That that was for me. That was a miracle. That's beautiful. <laughs> so um, that's the real miracle. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, in a cool way, you you have another miracle where you got you got used by the Holy Spirit. I did with somebody. I mean, one of the things that when I first came and we all uh, had our prayer, my prayer was to be able to get guidance and to listen and to heal from that guidance. And uh, uh, Mitha, one of the other participants, uh, was having a really dark time. And she wrote a poem about how the ego was taking her over or, or it was like it, she couldn't get out from under the ego. And uh, I, I felt, you know, uh, it actually brought me down because that was the day I was feeling really good, and uh, but I actually received, I really received, and I like Holy Spirit just said it, uh, to join with her. And that morning, the, that the next morning, I I usually open up my the work, the workbook to, for for this thirty days. I just open up to a page, and that's my lesson, and it's been amazingly on for me. But that morning, it wasn't me. It wasn't my lesson. Mm. It was Mitha's lesson. Mm. And so I asked, I came, I went up to her and she was not in a good place and she didn't want to have people helping her. But I, I just said, if you would like to join, I would, I, I, Holy Spirit has, has uh, directed me to, to join with you. And we did. We, we sat for two hours and I read her the lesson and, uh, You'd have to have her on the show to ask what 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 she felt, but uh, she basically said it was an extremely powerful healing for her. Just mm. just a, and just the me reading and just us sitting together, mm. and and as I said, it, it was directed definitely by the Holy Spirit because that wasn't my lesson and it wasn't yeah, yeah. and I was told to do that. Mm. I mean, I, or not told, but I was guided. I was like, this is something strongly within me that I need mm -hmm. to, to ask if she wanted to join. Mm. And so that was another powerful um, miracle for me that uh, I could 
actually get guidance and I could be used by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. as a communication device to heal. Mm -hmm. And I felt that that was mm -hmm. really quite powerful for me too. Beautiful. And what stands out to me is the involuntary nature of it. You didn't say, I want to help. No, me. I did you not. You just, you're open. I was open. I was open yeah. to, as I said, every day I'm open to what Holy Spirit want, you know, will give me today. Yeah. And that's what Holy Spirit gave, you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so beautiful for me because giving and receiving, yeah. I've, you know, it was really the same. Yeah. It was like feeling really, really strongly um, connected with Mitha. We still are. We still are very connected. So beautiful, Walter. I, you went straight to the deep stuff, so I don't know if <laughs> I have a better question. But one of my ones is you, just so everybody knows, Walter's. He's an actual farmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some cows. Yes, yeah. <laughs> retired teacher. And Veter veterinarian. Yeah, I'm a retired veterinarian too. Right. Okay. Well, I'm just going to ask it because I was curious. But why did you come here? <laughs> <laughs> why did I come here? Uh, I came here because I was. Um, uh, I've been listening to David's talks for a few, quite a few years now, and I was re really connected to his message and to his clarity and to his, um, you know, I just felt that what he was saying was, uh, was so clear and it spoke right to what I, mm -hmm. I needed. And uh, I was thinking about coming to the first one, but I was still teaching. I was teaching in college and... Um, May, I, 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 I wasn't able, you know, I teach into, into the end of May. And uh, so this, the, then you announced the second one, and it was September. And I went, ugh, you know, because I would have had to start teaching. But I was guided um, la the, the summer before this. Uh, I, was, uh, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I was really very clearly guided I needed to retire from teaching. You know, it was it. I mean, the, not just because I needed to go to the uh, monastery, which I, which I think really was the main reason, but uh, just because of other reasons that I wasn't really drawn to that anymore. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't my, um, mm -hmm. it, it didn't give me joy mm -hmm. that much to be teaching anymore. So, um, and when I did that, um, as soon as I announced uh, in September last year, I, I signed up Beautiful. for this year. So that's... <laughs> I, I just I, I felt that I uh, that this was I I, don't, I can't really give you a good answer That's of, even of why why I, I came. It's yeah. just that I was I really I, I guess I was called yeah. to come. Oh, that's beautiful. And 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 I really um, and, and and you know thank you for 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 be, being here because it was <laughs> for me it was so healing and so so opening and and I just am just filled with love and gratitude. For everybody, thank you, Walter. <laughs> yeah, You're welcome. We're so grateful you came. Well, I'm so grateful you're I, here and they have me. So, mm. what do you think of the way, like the the way we live and everything? Do you think you can take some of that? Oh, out? absolutely. Um, I I feel that um, I'm in going home. I I, I feel that I. Will be listening to Holy Spirit to guide mm -hmm. me much more than I, I had in the past, and have that vigilance to, to you know, to ask um, and then listen, and and then to uh, actually uh, follow follow up, <laughs> <laughs> because that's the that's the important part yeah, yeah. is the, is, the, is the practice Very and good. the practice practice practice, and so that's what. Uh, and so what the future will bring, I don't know uh, when I go home, and uh, and that's fine with me. It's like I'm just going to be guided, and and I trust that I will be guided to do what is best for my healing and mm. for all those around me. Yeah. What's best for them. So, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> so I'm ready to go, right? Yeah. You okay. Can. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Okay, I swore that I would have no tears on this one because I'm not talking. But, but I'd like to call Julie, come on up, and Francis. We have a. 
Hi. Hello. Welcome to From the Bottom Up. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Julie. So, yeah, we just got right into it. We just finished a, a dance party. Uh, we finished a beautiful movie in a gratitude circle last night. And in a sense, the mystery school's over. And now we're just sharing and extending the miracles. And so Julie's had some, some pretty powerful ones. And Francis has had some very deep joinings with Julie. So we just thought we'd come together and see what comes out. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe we can start by just asking you, Julie, how how would you describe the last month? Because you came all the way from Australia. Mm -hmm. How how would you describe the last month for you? Um, <laughs> oh, it's so difficult to. I I love words, but it's so difficult to put it into a few words to confine it. Um, how would I describe the last month? Um, a profound life experience, a consolidation of my and strengthening of my faith in God, a pathway forward One of the uh, uh, what what does come to mind, and I've said this to a few people. Um, my, my, um, my my background is social work, and that's given me a window into um, psychoanalysis and analysis, and I guess a study of the ego. And so my background has enabled me to have a solid knowledge of the ego. And so this last month has been bringing that knowledge to true forgiveness. So what is lacking in my training was a pathway to true forgiveness. Um, I never realized that true forgiveness, and I've known this is the way forward with some issues in my family life, but I've never really known until the penny dropped that it is forgiveness of my thoughts about my perception of the world. So I've been able to, allow, well, that's another thing that I didn't realize either. I've been able to identify my feelings quite well because of my social work knowledge to label feelings. And I've been able to release those feelings relatively well. But the penny dropped at one stage that I must allow that experience because it's in the experience of really facing it without a lot of analysis, which I love and which social work encourages. So, um, I just lost my train of thought then, but, um, so you're saying yeah. that it's more experiential. Oh, a a absolutely, and and the and, and really, um, the, the, I must say the penny has just dropped relatively recently about that. Um, it's so prof I mean, the profound is always simple in a way. Um, but our minds don't allow us to view it. Well, it certainly hasn't allowed me to view it in a simple way. So, 
Um, you asked at the beginning what the experience has been like. It's, and I've used this these words to a few others. It's felt like very sophisticated therapy. Um, in that it's allowed me. I I came here because I wanted to um, release. Um, my anguish about my relationship with my sisters and also my fear of my daughter and um, mental health and I came here because I wanted to be released of too many judgments and it has all happened through allowing those feelings in a supportive environment, um, allowing those feelings just to come out. Now how the healing actually happened, <laughs> I, I really, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, but, but, but it's know happened. It happened. <laughs> so I'm going back to Australia <laughs> with, um, with, with that all achieved. Um, See, this is beautiful because yeah. people always ask, what is forgiveness or how do you forgive? And and that is the answer, what you just said. I, I don't know, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, um, although I, I do know to a certain extent now that forgiveness <laughs> is of my perception of yeah. the hurt. Yes. I've always, I have known for a long time that forgiveness is the only road. So I've read self-help books on forgiveness, but it is of my perception. So you just have to somehow get into that space. Well, it was beautiful because you even, yeah. I, you know, I've been coming and going from campus, but what I remember is you had, I love my sisters, but why don't they love me? Oh, and then absolutely. Later on yeah. that night, you're like, I hate my sisters, actually. <laughs> why? Yeah, that was it. And then you you just kept going deeper. You're kind of going down through the layers until you forgave yeah. your perception. It was them. a longing for things to be different, a non-acceptance of the way the world is. Um, and that has freed me tremendously because I've always been wanting to work out this world. I know I'm digressing a little bit with my conversation here, but um, because I, I remember yeah. in yeah. one moment you broke down with a, a huge amount of emotion mm. when you realize you don't have to understand mm. this world anymore. You don't have to analyze and try to understand the problem anymore. There's a tremendous sense of freedom. Mm. I, I do think some understanding is good. You, you know, I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to hang on to that a little bit because, because my ego likes it. I love to analyze, you know, oh, you know, work things out. But, but um, it, it is an impossible task to really work this world out. And I go home released of that obligation oh. and responsibility to work the world out. Oh. Um, Let's say so, that's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> what a freedom yeah. if you just let go of one thing the responsibility of yeah. figuring this world out. Thank you, yeah. Julie. Okay, and thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> there's Gail. <laughs> So yeah, we never know how these are going to go. We have our next guest come on up, Eileen. And I I actually have a few questions for you, and then, then we're going to call Francis up again, because Francis has a connection. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. This is Eileen, everybody. So... I'll ask you a simple one. Because <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I would like to go. Do you feel ready to go straight to my main question? Yeah. I'm. I'm open. You're I'm open. open. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm I. Open to well, here now. I'll, I'll warm you up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's kind of ordinary here, right? Like there's not there's not 
strange trees growing or like weird even in the world's terms there's not a lot of weird things and things are are hard to talk about you know about what's really going on in here because there's not really a lot of drama and if there is drama it's kind of within a safe space yes. and you know for people to move through it why why did this work for you and yeah. did and did you feel that way what are these absolutely um I know, we, I know the emphasis is on the 30 days, yeah. but it really began, I think it was Lisa that said this, um, it begins the moment you sign up, the moment you make the commitment. So for me, it's actually been going on for at least 365 days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so much has happened in that time. Um, lots of massive changes and yeah, business went into liquidation, we had to sell our factory, our house, um, my son was ill, uh, he has mental health issues at the moment, and, and I thought I wasn't going to be able to come in the end, um, but there was a certainty underneath all of the doubts and all of the things that were coming up, and um, I just trusted that everything yeah. was, you know, spirit-led, spirit-guided, and... I'd like to comment on that because that's a very common thing, that once you make your commitment to a particular spirit-guided prompt, mm -hmm. the ego is just going to flush up, or lots of drama can even happen, and then it's not the time to just spin off, but it's because you're making the commitment that you can actually go through it all, so it's... Yeah. yeah, that's exactly how that's exactly how it felt, and um, yeah, I I hadn't heard of David until two years ago, <laughs> and I met David and Francis at um, the Melbourne conference, and so really I can go back to that point for when there was a kind of a giant leap, mm -hmm. and uh, and from there it has just developed more and more. Mm. And uh, but in that time, I cried more than I've ever cried in my entire life. I've actually cried less in the last thirty days than I have in all the time leading up. Wow. Um, but I've 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 been happy to do it because I felt that it was a release mm -hmm. and healing, very mm. healing and clearing. Mm. So yeah, there, that's you, been amazing. Did anything happen here that you didn't expect to happen? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. You tell us yeah. I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You tell me. I fell in love. <laughs> I, I really um I really didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> oh, um so yeah, I just um I think I might have uh I think I had a chat with Michael at one point and I um the analogy that came to mind was actually open heart surgery. It was it was the ethereal or spiritual version of open heart surgery because it felt like I, my ribs had been cracked open and I had this huge release in my heart and it was so expansive and it was inclusive of everything. Mm. And and that has stayed. That that and I I don't think it will. You know, maybe things will come and go that will <laughs> dampen it. I don't know, but um, but it's there. Mm. And I didn't realize how closed off I had become. Mm. Um, and until that moment, that that probably was about a year ago that it began, but it was emphasized, amplified, and expanded here. Mm. Um, I've been so happy in these 30 days. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I'm in love. <laughs> oh, don't go yet, my woman. <laughs> oh, you don't we just know. stay together. <laughs> no. Okay, well with that, I, I want to see where something goes, because when I, when I had left here a few weeks ago, mm. I'll just read it out, because... Okay. You shared a parable with me of of getting burned when you were younger. 
Yes. And like a full, you were two years old, like a full body burn, actually. <laughs> don't make me cry. And everyone around you, as you grew up, you know, was feeling guilty. Um, and they made sure to tell, like, you friends would come over and, you know, they knew you were burned or whatever. And they would, your family would tell everyone that, that you did it to yourself because you walked, which you, you did. So this, you walked in and pulled a pot down, right? Yeah. And, and burned. Yeah. And in some sense, that's good because, you know, you get to face it closer to home. Like Jesus says in The Course in Miracles that, you know, you're projecting it onto everything and everybody. And the first step is to pull it back. But you, you're so afraid of pulling it back because you think the knife is going to come out of your brother and stick into you. So that's why nobody wants to bring it back. Mm -hmm. But he says, don't stop there. Take the knife and give it to me, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's that's forgiveness. And so you weren't really dealing with the knife so much into other people. You were dealing with the knife closer to home, into what seems to be yes. this body or personality. Mm. Yeah. So then you were then you were protective of others in the kitchen at growing up, um, because mm. somewhere deep inside there was this trauma, even though you were only two years old, mm. that, okay, well, I'm going to make sure this never happens yeah. to somebody else. And then you were put in the kitchen here. Nobody yes. knew this. Yes. And you were put in the kitchen, and on your first day, a knife fell to yes. the ground. <laughs> yes. Did Did you have a healing around any of this related to, like the burn, the healing, the knives, the protectionism around the kitchen? Mm -hmm. And you can sh can you share how that how that went? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I might just take a moment. Yeah. Uh, because when I talked about this with you, um, that was the first time I had opened up about it. Because um, what I wanted to heal from it, uh, I mean, the scars of the sc they're, they're, you know, they're lifelong. But what I wanted to heal was the the shame and the self hatred that it created in me that I did this to myself, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, um, and I'm not sure of the psychology or whatever, but I did learn as I've, you know, come on with it. Um, uh, burns victims carry a lot of shame. But I didn't know that until rel relatively recently. But that's what I wanted to heal. And I didn't want to carry it anymore. It's been lifelong. And, and I think it began a pattern for me of you know, I ended up having what my parents called, you know, I was accident prone. So as, as a kid, I was accident prone. So lots of things happened. Um, that was the major event. Um, and so it's, it's been a pattern. It's been a pattern. And, um, and I really, really wanted to heal that. I wanted to clear it. And you provided, and Jenny was part of this too provided a sacred and safe space for me to do that and you held me up you held me in the light and I felt safe in the whole process and it was like a deliverance of something that's been so deep mm. and it was so beautiful um, I'm so grateful for that. That that's a huge miracle mm. for me, being here and have that happen. And I didn't have that in mind. How did know? it move through? Just just by being here, or just, was there a specific? Um, I, I I didn't consciously have that. I I didn't think when I go there, yeah. I'm going to do this. I was, I didn't even know that was a, a process right, or right. or anything that would even occur or happen or be available. Um, but when it was, I. I, I went with it. Because mm. you were saying it's a miracle around your top. Yeah, well, fo following that, um, we were having a beautiful song, uh, you know, singing and dancing uh, during the day. Um, I think it was the day after we, we talked. And 
in the morning it was a bit cooler and so I just had on a little tank top but I had on a jumper but as we were all dancing I got hotter and hotter and I'm like oh you know and I didn't want to take my jumper off and then at some point I was like I'm taking my jumper off so I did <laughs> um, I didn't get quite the distance that I wanted to <laughs> I tied it round my neck but it was still huge for me yeah. that was that was huge mm. um, so yeah it was it was just amazing but um, I've been so happy and we've you know we all came together and we lit up the world Mm. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me check if. Did you have any? No? Okay, and. Okay, well, we're going to leave it on a miracle. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Marta. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. We go way back. We spent a month together in yeah, Spain. Spain, yes. A few Two years, years ago. ago, yes. A big jump, and then. Mm. Well, the yeah, Francis is going to join us. For mm. this. Great. So we both have the same experience with you of of a miracle. Uh, maybe I'll ask her the husband story first because we thought mm -hmm. that was kind of profound we um we know that when you were with us in spain a while back maybe you could describe your life situation with your husband and oh yeah my husband uh, is ill he has parkinson and it started five years ago and the last two years are uh, it's getting worse so i take care of him and uh, and the last couple of half year, it was so hard for me. I was getting a burnout and depressed because it was 24-7 every day. So uh, I was really depressed. Yeah. And then this happened. <laughs> and you, so. you had come to our Spain retreat and you wanted to stay on longer. Yes. And you made the call. And the, very, the call that you made home to your husband, he went into like paralytic attack yeah, or something? Yeah, I couldn't. I, I, I wanted to stay a little bit longer. I didn't want to leave, actually. <laughs> but for my husband, I needed to go home. And I called him and, and asked him if it's all right if I stay a little bit longer. And he didn't like it. And he, well, he said, well, if you want, you know, like he wasn't agree. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll stay. And then we were having a session in the gathering room and Emily came in with the phone and I immediately, immediately know it was my husband. And he told me that since I phoned him, he couldn't move anymore. He was totally paralyzed. And while I was in the gathering room before that, I had so much guilt. Guilt? Oh, it, it was unbearable. So it just got reflected. It got reflected. So yeah. it, it was kind of a release <laughs> to say, "Okay, I'm okay. It's okay. I'm coming home. I'll come home. I mm -hmm. will come home." So it was. But I cried my heart out mm -hmm. later when I was walking in the mountains. I was crying my heart out because I really wanted to stay. Yeah. Well, that's that's two years ago. Then two years has passed, mm -hmm. and then then you applied for the mystery school. Yeah, I, I heard Emily and Jason in Spain 2016, and you were starting it up. And my f first thought was, I want to be there. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't last year, and this year my husband is getting worse, so I thought it's not going to happen. But I'm um, in a women's group, and in January we came together, and we ha had the described what we wanted for this year and I described that I would like to hear more guidance from the Holy Spirit 
and I would like to come to the mystery school. And we all agreed about it. It's just <laughs> that. And then, well, I knew it was already f full, so I didn't apply. And then in July, in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep, and I decided to mail to Susanna, the Dutch Susanna. I'm still connected with her. For me, it was the middle of the night, for her probably not, and I mailed to her, oh, I really want to come, it's so, such a deep, deep longing. I really want to go there, but it's probably not possible at all. But she said, reply, apply, just apply and see what will happen. So I did, and then and Jane Marie, uh, Wrote, wrote to me that it was full, and I asked, isn't there any counter uh, lists? And she said, yeah, you're on the fourth spot waiting list, yeah. of the waiting list, yeah. yeah. So, one week before it really started, I got uh, a mail that I was in. <laughs> a week? <laughs> a week! A week before, yes. And this that week, Marshall was so ready to come within a week, she got her life all sorted out to come, and she got her husband sorted out completely, find the caretaker, and everything yes. happened completely within a week. Yeah, incredible. It was like, when the desire was strong, there is no obstacle that can bar you away to yeah. come over. And you had a miracle about light being... Yeah, yeah. because in, we had, I had a week retreat, with the Dutch uh, teacher of the, of, the, of the course and I was praying there to Jesus, Jesus please come home with me because I didn't feel it at that time. And then when I came home a couple of nights later my husband is sleeping in another room because he cannot c come in and out of bed anymore. And uh, the next morning I came to him, I have to help him. And then he said, yes, something amazing happened to me. There was yeah, an angel or a light person came to me at night because he couldn't sleep, he was very restless. And that light creation came to him and put his hand on his toes and his feet and told him to calm down. And that was so beautiful. So I thought, oh, I don't need to go to the mystery school anymore. Jesus is already here in my home, so I don't need to go there. So I left. I forgot about it all, and then suddenly I got the message that I a week, could, a week before. And this mad miracle just continued because the day when Marta was about to leave to the airport to come to the mystery school on the morning, when the taxi was driving to pick her up. Yes. You can tell. <laughs> yes, my husband came down, he was stumbling down, and he said he wasn't feeling very well. He had to throw up, and he was all sweaty, and he was very ill. He, he was having a panic uh, attack. And I helped him, and at a certain point he was laying down on the, on the ground. But then the taxi came. So I... I told him, <laughs> I did it also the week before, I told him, I, oh, I, I didn't told him that, that I, I already gave him over to the Holy Spirit and asked him to, to take care of him. But when he was laying on the ground, I said, well, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I really have to go. And I told him not to, to be afraid, because he was very afraid. I said, don't be afraid, I'll ask, I have asked God to take care of you, I, let, I will leave you in his, his hands. And then I, I went. You went? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She got into the taxi. She got into the taxi and... I just left him. And gave the loved ones to the Holy Spirit. Yes. She literally said, I've given you to the Holy Spirit, I have to go now. Yes. And this, I mean, that's just a demonstration of faith and trust. Yeah, it is. Because and two years ago I couldn't. I would have cancelled everything mm -hmm. on the, just on the spot. 
but there was no no doubt about it, and I, I knew I, I I will go. And how did it go yeah. in the last thirty days? <laughs> now, <you're there. laughs> yes. Well, I I, I I knew I had organized everything around him, and for you though, for your heart. for 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 him and also for me. For so. you, how did it go the last thirty oh, days? Oh, for me, yeah. Well, I know he was safe, so I didn't yeah. think I, about. It. I didn't think about him. Because uh, I think it was Lisa or you, Francis. Don't go with your thoughts. Go in, go home because it will take you away from the present moment. So I knew he was safe. He was being taken care of. So I didn't. I had no. Regret. No, I didn't have the thinking to go and into that. It was okay. I felt really okay with it. But for yourself, would you say this is a huge gift for yourself to be oh, here? Oh yes, yes, because it, you know, <laughs> I'm not used to choose for myself. Mm. I'm kind of uh, compromising, 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 compromising. Yes, and and, and thinking for others. Say, yeah, yeah, and this this is really what I I wanted. And I did. Mm. So, yes. And it's amazing. It's really amazing because now, before I came, I had such a fear for the future, because he will be getting worse and worse, and I have to find a place for him to stay in an old people's home, and I don't like those places at all. And it gave me a lot of. Pain that it will be in the future like that, and and also to leave him, and it was hard. You know, I was already looking all over for it, and now I don't have any fear for the future anymore. <laughs> no, I don't worry because I I, I hear the guidance. Like and, it's tiny. It's and so cute. Yeah, I I know it will be all right. Whatever will happen, I know it will be okay for mm. him and for me and mm. for everybody else. Mm. So, and that's huge for me. It is really. huge. <laughs> really. It's huge. It is. Yes. The other thing I wanted to ask you because um, Francis pre premiered a movie with us in Cannes called uh, "A Child Is Waiting." It's a 1962 movie where um, a young boy. Uh, mentally challenged, and Burt Lancaster plays this very non-compromising teacher that really is about let the Holy Spirit love him through the children and through the right teacher at the right time. And there's this one teacher who's so attached to him and quote loves him and constantly gets pulled away. And it's a powerful movie because it shows what the world would call love. Like there's a woman who was here for 30 days with us who saw that movie a while ago. And when she first saw it, she hated the Burt Lancaster character because mm -hmm. she resonated with the world's love with the boy. And then this time, when you did the movie, it's like a totally different movie because she saw Burt Lancaster as the Holy Spirit. The true empathy. True empathy movie. Yes. And I wasn't here, but I heard you were just having a lot of emotion watching that movie. Can you share the, um, the healing or what was going on for you? Yeah. I realized I, I put all my love on one person and it made it so very special that I forgot about the whole world. Mm. I, and it was like being in function for one person. And now I realize that it's, It's not really the special love that's important. It's more about sharing and extending uh, your love. So I realized that that I think I realized I want to live in the community and really, really want to go for it. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> okay. I will leave you to it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hi Raphael. How are you doing Jason? Good, welcome. Thanks for the bottom up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. What's up over here? So, yeah. question that I wanted to ask you yeah. was, what affected you most when you came here? Because you've kind of had a, from Puerto Rico, you've had a very kind of crazy life this last year because all that's been happening from New York as well. But since you've come here, you said that two things have affected you the most around health and guidance. Yeah. And I thought maybe you could share a little bit about what's changed for you around the idea of guidance and health? Changed? Well, actually, around guidance, I've learned a lot. Um, uh, perhaps one of the strongest uh, uh, reasons, or I'm really not, not very sure when, why I came, you know, I, I really don't know. But consciously, I came... Um, because I wanted to understand how you work around guidance, how you come together and pray and listen for guidance. Because uh, I've been, I'm relatively new to the course. I'm still in my lesson 202 today. And, uh, and maybe I started 30 lessons before, I started in the middle and then I went back, started going back from the first lesson. So like seven, eight months, and this is an invitation uh, by my partner to do the course and see if we could change our relationship from a unholy relationship to a holy relationship, from a horizontal to a vertical relationship. And I didn't know what she was talking about when she first talked to me about this, but uh, you know, I've been invited for the to the course for like 25 years, and I finally, this was my calling, you know, and I started doing it, and I was spending la the last uh, six, seven, eight months just like doing my lessons, reading or listening to the book I read, or listen to the whole book and then listening a lot to Ken Wapnick and to Carol Howe and to David that you know every day they have the lesson and they have a video and um Earl Purdy also so still and we're doing you know uh, how how to do no private thoughts and how to do expression with a partner it's really was very hard for us and um so I wanted to and I told Lisa when I first talked to her yeah, I wanted to learn how you guys do guidance. You know, how you pray for guidance, and uh, because you, you know we have to have the same guidance, only one Holy Spirit, right? So how if two people have different guidance, there's something going on. Yeah. So I didn't understand, I didn't know, you know, what you meant by being clear when I first came here, and that I I've learned with uh, with the help of your sessions. Um, you know, the, one of the movies that you showed made it really clear was. Um, the Paul Pot movie, The Singer. One ch once, one Chance, I think. One yeah. Chance is called, yeah. Um, because uh, uh, you showed how um, we call witnesses of fear uh, to our life once we are open to love. And that's what I have felt here. You know, I came here and I was open and my heart was open and then I felt so much love at the beginning and then I shut it down and came fear came shutting me down and I realized I was blocked and I was looking at it like, detached but I still was blocked mm -hmm. and um, so it helped me you know see how you pray it around for guidance and you clear yourself before coming together to just do something that you all are hearing and feeling at the same time so that has been very helpful yeah well I've got in my <laughs> in my mind I've got Lisa actually Lisa's not in the room but if anybody else there over in the gathering room who's been listening and feels like you've just 
if there's something burning you really want to share from your experience, or Lisa, you want to come over, or even David. David's been on every one of my shows, so he might have to make a cameo. We'll see. <laughs> well, we don't know where Lisa but is. But Lisa might not even be listening to me right now, so we'll give this a minute or two. Well, one thing I do want to share yeah, uh, is how powerful it feels like when, when the last few days we've been going through interviews with every single participants or students to, to, to hear their there are miracles of this month and it was just so profound but one thing that is really profound for me to hear is that none of it happened because of a person because of, of a teacher and there is no miracle that happened because of me or any teacher or a place there's no codependency saying oh because of you I now do something but it's the miracle is the s spirit like the, everybody saw the spirit show up in their life in the last 30 days when they invite the spirit and they saw how the spirit orchestrated mm. their life here and mm. orchestrated their healing and orchestrated their specific mm. blocks yeah. for them to face and that was really beautiful because nobody should really live here and feel attached to a person or a teacher Community. or or a place and but i feel they truly like congratulate because they found the one that that they can rely on from this point on and that feels very very beautiful mm -hmm. yeah we, we watched the movie yes man last night because we were in prayer one of the biggest questions was how am i going to take this home and the yes man was all about being in a big yes to life and that in the end you'll learn discernment with that attitude of yes and we we had so much yeah. fun with that and seeing that you're not reliant. You're reliant on the spirit. Yeah, very, very beautiful for me to hear. And another thing, if anything, I feel like I wish everybody can go and, and, and realize they can give themselves permissions to laugh, to be like a child, to do things they truly want to do, and don't have to wait for a moment for other people to, to give them permission or anything and that is if anything I feel that's truly what is going on you know it's like a, a taste of how free that can feel like just to to follow the heart yeah. <sighs> you get to say hi to people here <laughs> oh David's here oh perfect Katina to see. She wants to read her poem right. too. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's well, been a beautiful mystery <laughs> school here. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's everything in form is just a reflection, but but it's the purpose you give to it. So for those that really have showed up here that were saying I want to heal and I don't even know what that looks like, but I'm just going to show up and. Mm. And, uh, and then draw forth those witnesses, then it's it's good because sometimes you can you can have this habitual belief in your mind that you're a person and that you live in a certain place and that you have a certain environment and it becomes so reinforced over and over and over that that it's your self concept and then today we were talking with some people about the thing about going back. And we were having lunch, and it's like, what does that even mean? Because some of them, I think Tina, who got this uh, poem that she wrote, she was saying, well, yeah, I, I really uh, was wondering what am I going to do when I leave here, when I go back. And she did the VR, mm -hmm. and uh, she had the experience like, oh, this is, this is all just like a VR, and mm -hmm. I can make my own uh, <laughs> VR, a happy VR. Uh, Seeing the power of the mind, uh, there she is. I say like a Jesus VR, which is really just forgiveness. It's just allowing your mind to to see that uh, everything that you perceive is a reflection of what you're thinking, and that you're not in the environment. That literally, the environment's in you, and that's always important to remember. That the world is not mm. outside of you. The world is inside your consciousness. Mm. 
And if there's something you don't like about the world, then, then you can change your mind about it. You can change the purpose in your mind. You can let go of the hatred and mm. you can uh, see a purified version of the past, which is really what the forgiven world or the happy mm. dream is. It's just a purified version of the, of the past and it's purified because you would have it be so. That you would bring nothing of, of hatred, no grievances mm. uh, to be reflected in your world anymore. You finally are ready to go, okay, let all things be exactly as they are. I want mm. to be happy. I deserve to be happy. I was created happy and I'm going to be happy. And I'm willing to go through any kind of purification process or forgiveness that is required. So, and it's beautiful that, yeah, Tina, Tina wrote the beautiful Tina. poem about, about gonna, that experience. We're going to have Tina share that, but before um, I give up my seat, <laughs> I, I want to just share one more thing. Um, yeah, just uh, also very inspiring. When, when I was talking to the participants here, I realized that all the gift they have received is really uh, from, not because they did anything, not because we did anything, is really only because they did the one tiny step of following what they mm. they they knew they had to do and so many people you heard marcher's story about seemingly how hard it was for her to to really follow through and there are many many stories in this in this group who face those kind of uh, very dramatic seeming family situations where they can easily say the situation didn't allow me to follow what I felt, but the moment they followed, their heart just got blown open. They were in love, <laughs> they didn't know why, and they never looked back in this whole month. They never looked back saying, I shouldn't have done that, I missed them. What they, somehow the mind went really forward, and all the stories they realized was only existing to stop them, and there was no mm. validity or reality in any mm. way once they break through that story and the fear mm. so that is just so profound for mm. for all of us to to yeah it's just one step just follow that mm. that is all the where all the healing lies so. <laughs> I love it. okay team. Uh, thank you <laughs> yeah welcome <laughs> stay close Tina Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, Hi. Tina, when she first came, I picked her up with four Dutch ladies, and they were all speaking Dutch in the back, and you didn't. No. So we, you were kind of just quiet, and today when we were out there dancing, you were just letting it fly. I'm not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no holding back. No holding back. <laughs> yeah. And you've had something that's come yeah. through you? It's been like um, for this uh, during this month uh, we we've, we've been doing so many exercises that is like for me life changing um, and um, yesterday we did uh, yesterday we did this uh, angel bath uh, and uh, for me it was like I felt like I was born again in some way. Um, and then after I had this VR with Andy, and I also did the, the evolution or something like you get born again, and um, and then we saw the movie Yes, with the, yes man, yes man, yes. So I felt inspired this morning to to write this poem, which I you want me to share. So I would share it now. We haven't heard it yet, so we're okay. Um, and it's called born again I had an angel bath this morning and I was born again moved really slowly through a canal of love I got hit by a train and turned into 1000 birds I'm born again suddenly Inside, inside the womb, eye-gazing with my true self. Such love, such innocence, I'm safe, 
I am home. In every moment I am born again. Just lean back in your arms and be born again. To a new day that you will unfold. In a new way that you want me be. Mm. That you want me see. I let myself be born again. Come alive. Say yes. And be born again. <laughs> we, uh, we hear people you. cheering in the other room. <laughs> yeah. All the way. Cheer goes up. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Thank you for. And you can see on the worldwide. <laughs> 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 you can use I love you. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Oh. <laughs> Cheers go up. Yes. <laughs> precious. Thank you it's for precious. letting me share. Oh, Thank you. Thank so you. <laughs> we all felt it. Yeah, lovely. Unless you have any. Your thoughts. Mm, I guess we're probably around the top of the hour. Yeah. <laughs> She's done. <It's> the perfect <laughs> uh, I think our room is empty, so it feels like a perfect place to end another episode of From the Bottom Up. And I just feel so grateful to Lisa putting this whole mystery school on, Francis, and David, and all of us joining in just have this opportunity for us to. Yeah. be together and share this miracle with the world it's you couldn't ask for anything better for a show or for life <laughs> so thank you everyone thanks thank for tuning you. in thank, thank you, you. Thank bless someone. you I'm gonna take it <laughs> oh. oh there's the casa here comes our cast behind oh yeah everyone <laughs> you can come before you give us over we can show you even the gathering room. They might have a camera. I don't know. Eric's probably scrambling. Hi. <laughs> Where do I? Oh. Okay, I'm coming. Oh, there they are. Oh, there's the mystery school. You can you can see them all over there. They're all waving. Am I crazy? <laughs> Oh, Christopher, yeah, Bridget, <laughs> Kelly, <Yeah. laughs> and lots Sweet. of people not on camera. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Take it away, cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the main studio. <laughs>